First John 5, verse 4. Uh, for whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So what overcomes the world? Our faith. What overcomes the world victoriously? Our faith. Our faith overcomes the world. Isn't that good news? Yes. Whose faith? My faith our overcomes faith. your world? No, your faith overcomes your world. You need to own this, that faith is your victory. And you need to own this specific thing. You need to know this, prove this, and work it, and know that it will work every time. Are you here? Yes. Yeah. And I'm going to pull out something here this morning. Let me talk about it for a second. This this is a is a board. I don't want you to read it yet, but it's a chalkboard. And I was listening to my spiritual dad, Kenneth Hagin, and he had a prophecy in there where he said, there's going to come a day where the things of the Spirit will be so explained so simply that you would be able to write it on a chalkboard and people just be able to do what's on the chalkboard and have miraculous results in their life. He prophesied this years ago. Hallelujah. Well, this is that day, and I'm like, okay, well, I, I can at least do that. If somebody's prophesying something that's going to happen, and then here I come along, well, how smart do I have to be to just go get myself a chalkboard and start writing things on it? <laughs> but this is what I call the faith feedback loop. Yeah. The faith feedback loop. This is the hurdle you must get over. You must know the faith feedback loop. You've got to know it. You've got to understand it. That this will literally put you over. That faith is the victory that overcomes the world. And this is how simple it is to have victory over any situation and every situation. That's pretty simple, right? Does this look like some calculus thing here? No. It's really difficult with numbers and figures. No, it's very simple. Did you get that? Yeah. I could even put that down here. Glory be to God. The faith feedback loop. Look at that. Glory. Jesus is Lord. And this is what you need to know. You need to prove it. You need to work it. Look at it. What does it say? The first thing you do is you say something. And what happens when you say it? You hear it. What happens when you hear the word of God? Faith comes. What did Jesus say about the mountain? He said that whosoever would say to the mountain and believe that what he says will come to pass, he'll have whatever he says. Well, this begins as a small loop. How many of you know what feedback is? Have you ever heard feedback? Like from a microphone? You get the microphone too close and you just say one thing into it. You say it into the microphone. It comes out the speaker. Now, the microphone's hearing what came out of the speaker. And it goes right back in at the speed of sound and gets louder and louder and louder because now it's louder going into the microphone, louder coming out the speaker, louder going into the microphone, out the speaker. It's feedback. Yeah. That's what this is. When you speak the word of God, you're getting feedback. It resonates down into your spirit. Faith comes, which causes you to what? Say it with more faith. Yeah. And you say it with more faith and it keeps coming. By Jesus stripes I was healed. By Jesus stripes I was healed. By Jesus stripes I was healed. And it, and it builds up until faith is the victory that overcomes the problem, overcomes the world. So as this is getting bigger and it's getting stronger and it's going faster and it's getting louder, it'll take you over the problem because faith is a victory that goes over your problem. Does that make sense? You must get over this hurdle of knowing it. You've got to have it. And you've got to have that work in your... I hope I can get this across. You've got to see this and have it work in your life so that you can do it again and again and again. You need to take a scripture, say it, hear it, say it, hear it, and have faith come until you overcome a specific problem and know that you proved it, know that you overcame your problem, with that method. That's the hurdle I was talking about. You know, because it's too easy to go, okay, well, the hurdle is the problem. No, the hurdle's not. This is the hurdle. You've got to get over this to know that this works and know that it'll work every time. 
Did you get it? Like, I, you know, if I had a, uh, symptoms of sickness or something come on me, I'll, I'll go, lots of times I'll go and take a bath because you can't do anything really when you're in the bath. I know Olivia, she'll write a book or something, but I, I'd get it all wet. You can't do your Palm Pilot thing there or whatever in the bath. You'll drop it. <laughs> you can't make toast while you're in the bath. It might slip in. Right? So I'm, I'm confined. And I'll sit there and I'll make myself say, by Jesus stripes I was healed, sickness cannot stay in my body. Yeah. And then I'll say it again and I'll say it again and I'll say it again and I'll work out on that thing. Five, ten, twenty, forty, sixty minutes until all of a sudden I know something happened. I said it and my faith was released in those words where I knew that that thing left me. Yeah. Oh. Whether the symptoms left or not, I knew that my faith overcame that thing. Yeah. I've done it again and again and again and again. Yeah. Financially, spiritually, physically. It's, this is the hurdle you must get over. You must have this, especially as society members. This is what we're putting into you. I'm writing it very simply on chalkboards, right? And so you got to take this and do it, and it will work every time. And once you've got over, gotten over the first hurdle, this hurdle, and it's taken you over something in life, you'll never be the same. You'll know that you can do it again and again and again and again and again and again and again. And it gets easier. Does this make sense? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's go to, to uh, Romans 10. I will just reiterate. <laughs> You're saying the same thing. I know. And sometimes you just got to, you know, stir up people's remembrance. That's right. And how do you do that? By saying. We're stirring you up. This should excite you because you yeah. can, I can get over any problem, yeah. any hurdle in life right. with God's word, yeah. and I can have it. But I'm going to have to have some feedback going on. I'm going to get into that feedback loop, and you initiate it. I may help you out. Right? This message today, will hopefully, will put some faith in you to get that get that spindle rolling to get it going in the right direction. But you're going to have to be the one to feed it, get that feedback loop going. Feedback. The faith feedback loop. Right. Lord of God. He just coined a phrase. Jesus is Lord. Romans 10. You there? Yes. Verse 17. You should know this. Yes. So then faith comes. Mm -hmm. It comes. Well, we can overcome the world by faith. If we just knew how to have faith to come, well, then we could get enough faith to overcome our problem. We all understand that, right? Yeah. We all understand that a certain amount of faith will cause you to overcome a problem. I don't care what problem it is. Is this right? That's right. Yeah. Any problem in the world you can overcome by faith. Faith is the victory. Yeah. Whether it's sickness, you know, we know this. You could have, you could have a stump for a leg. And if you had enough faith, it would grow right out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how do we get that kind of faith? Faith comes by hearing. It comes. It just comes. That part of the feedback just comes. So faith comes. But how's it come? By hearing. And hearing. By the Word of God. So you got to hear it. All right. Go to verse 6. Same chapter. You have to know these things. You're required to know these things here. Verse 6, But the righteousness which is of faith speaks. Huh. I want to be righteous. I want to be in faith. Well, the righteousness of faith does something. It may dance. It may, it may you know, giggle. But it speaks. Well, I've got, I got news for you. You're, you're in the loop already. If you speak the Word of God, you're going to hear the Word of God, and you've already begun that feedback loop. Are you here? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Faith speaks. Say, faith speaks. Faith speaks. Yay. Say, my faith speaks. My faith speaks. Go down to verse 8. But what saith it? The Word. <laughs> You like that? What saith it? My faith speaks. What saith it? Yeah, the, word. Right. Yeah. the word. Right? right. What, does faith, what does faith speak? The word. Faith the word. speaks 
the word. Well, when you speak the word, you're going to hear the word. That, fe that feedback loop, that faith feedback loop is going to begin. I hope you're here. Is this too difficult? No. This is very simple. It's like you could write it on a chalkboard. <laughs> I wish you'd make it so simple you could write it on a chalkboard. I just did. God did. All right? So faith, the righteousness of faith, speaks. What does it speak? The Word. Where is it? It's near you. It's in your mouth. Number one, it's in your mouth, and then it's in your heart. Where does faith go? Where does it grow? It grows in your heart. It's a force that will grow up in your heart, and you, know, you don't know how it happens. You don't know how that faith grow, grew up in you to where you spoke something, just like God, remember, that's how he does things. You spoke something and that's going to come to pass and you don't care if somebody comes up and slaps you. You know it's going to come to pass. That's faith. How do you get to that point from just from saying? You keep saying. You keep saying. Did you see that? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Verse 17 says, faith comes by hearing. Verse 6 says, the righteousness of faith says, verse 8 says, what does it say? It says the word. Now go to verse 10. I hope you're here. Yeah. For with the mind man believes. No, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It means healing, deliverance, prosperity, whatever you need. Is this too difficult? What part of you is going to believe? The heart. Your mind is going to have a hard time believing it because it wants to understand stuff. But faith is of the heart. It's with your heart that you're going to believe. When you say it, your heart believes it. And then at some point, your heart's going to believe it enough and you're going to say it and that will be the end of it because it says right here, with the mouth, confession is made unto what? Salvation. Salvation. And it's an all-inclusive word. It means deliverance. You can be delivered. You can be saved. You can be healed. You can be prospered. You can have any verse of Scripture, any word of God this way this is normal christianity this is the way you're supposed to do it it does not diminish the gifts of the spirit or all of those other things but this is normal christianity and this is what you're learning how to do do you see that yes. right here in romans is that clear enough so you're gonna with your mouth keep confessing until the salvation shows up because as you got that feedback loop going, faith is coming, faith is coming, faith is coming. And then there, your mouth confesses yeah. unto your healing. Yeah. And then there'll be one time you'll say, by Jesus stripes, I'm healed. And it'll go whoosh, out of you and fix something. Yeah. It'll go whoosh, out of you and the devils will leave. Yeah. It'll go whoosh, out of you and some angels will do something and bring you a big <laughs> bucket of money. Yeah. Or bring you a raise or bring you a promotion or do whatever it's doing that you're confessing. Yeah. Or move the mountain. Yeah. Or part the Red Sea. Yeah. Is this right? Yeah. Are you getting this? Yeah. Okay. I hope you're here. Now I'll go to uh, 2 Corinthians 6, 1. Yay. Woo. Is this making sense? Yes, sir. Glory be to God. Can you do this? Yes. This, is, this is simple enough. I can do it. I got faith feedback going on. Yeah. <laughs> and I want you to see that this just isn't some kind of an equation I came up with to be tricky or fancy. This is how we walk with God. This is how God does things. When we're doing this, we're walking with Him. So if I, if I could, I didn't do it, but I don't know where those things are. I was going to walk, I was going to put God here in the middle. Because remember, this is God's idea. Is that right? Yeah. This is God's idea, and you're going to walk with him in this. So you're going to put your, your, me right in there too. God and me. Yeah. Walking together. We're saying, we're hearing, we're, we're, faith's coming. We're doing this. It's God's idea, and you and God are workers together. Yeah. Does this make sense? Yes. Actually, go over. You're still in 2 Corinthians there. Go to 2 Corinthians 6.1. 
2 Corinthians 6, verse 1. Then we, as workers together with him. We're workers together with him. This is God's plan. This is God's method. When we get in line with it, we're working with him. We have the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believed, therefore have I spoken. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 13. We also believe and therefore speak. We're working together with God. He has the, it's the same spirit. Of, whose, whose spirit of faith was this? It's the, it's the Holy Spirit. This is yeah. God's idea. Are you seeing this now? Yeah. This is God's idea that when he, in the beginning, we're going to go there in a minute, in Genesis, what did he do? He oh. believed something and he spoke it. Yeah. So everything that we have, see, and know to do with came out of this. So if we're going to work with God, we're going to be doing the same thing. We're going to be speaking words and believing words yeah. and speaking words and believing words. It, there is no other way to walk with God. I understand we all have this concept of what it means to walk with God. It's usually religious and, and it's most likely wrong. And we got to clean it out of there because that's not walking with God. That's just a concept of walking with God. This is walking with God. And if you yeah. do this, you get inside that loop, that feedback loop. That's you walking with God. You're working with him. You're walking with him. He is the word. You are speaking his word. I hope you're ready for this. Did I read that? We have the same spirit of faith according as it is written. I believed, therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. And who did this originally? God did. Whose image did he create you in? His image. All right, go back there. You having fun? This is too simple. Tell me about it. We make, we make it complex. I learned this, you know, years ago, and it's just getting stronger now, that when I say the Word of God, that's me walking with God. When I don't say the Word of God, I'm not walking with God. I may feel good. I may feel all right with God. I may know my sins are forgiven. I may know I'm going to die and go to heaven. But that's not me walking with God. Me walking with God is saying His Word. Genesis, ha, ha, ha. Say, ha, 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 ha. ha, ha, ha. Ooh. Genesis 126. And God said, remember he was saying all this stuff. And God said, verse 26, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over. How was Adam going to have dominion over? He, by what, the same thing, all we know about, if you just read from the beginning up to here, the only thing you would know about God was that he was a, was someone who speaks words and has them come to pass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So by the law of first reference, the only thing we can know about Adam is that in his image, he was going to be someone who That's speaks right. words and has them come to pass. That's right. Is that right? Yeah. And then we have much more revelation as you go on and read the rest of the whole Bible, but it began there. It began with words, him saying, so here's Adam in God's image. Let us make him, how? As a, as a person who can speak words, believe them to come to pass, and they come to pass. Yeah. Are you here? Yes. Oh, All right, verse 27. And so God created man in his own image. After the image of God created he, him, male and female committed created he them. And remember, it said, and let them have dominion. So how are they going to have dominion? By their spoken word. It's how God created man to have dominion, and that's how they had dominion. They'd say, lion, shut up and sit down. Right? Yes. <laughs> Trees grow. No fruit come on off of you hereafter forever. Mountain be removed, you cast into the sea, right? This is how they did it because they were in God's image. And this is, wow. are you here? Yes. Whose image are you created in? In God's image. How are you going to walk with God? Now, how could Adam have walked with God? He had to walk with God in this same thing by speaking words. 
And if you don't believe me, go over to chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Now, those words, living soul, is a little bit blind to us. I did some Hebrew study on this. Actually, I have a whole book on it. Just this. Proper speech. But these words, the living soul, means in Hebrew, a speaking spirit. And man became a speaking spirit. God created man in his own image. He created him a speaking spirit. We are the only thing on this earth that has the ability to speak words and believe they come to pass. Parrots can't. Monkeys can't. Dogs can't. We can. We're creating God. How are we creating God's image? This. We were created a speaking spirit. That's how we're like God. You got it? Yeah. So if I'm going to walk with God, he must be a speaking spirit. If I'm going to walk with God, he's a speaking spirit, and we're going to walk together, we're going to be with each other, then I need to be a speaking spirit, and I need to be speaking the same thing he's speaking. That's how you walk with God. You don't walk with God by thinking. You don't walk with God by feeling. You walk with God by speaking because he's a speaking spirit. He created you to be a speaking spirit. Are you here? And if you still don't believe me, go to chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Everybody goes, yes, I walk in the garden alone with the dew was still on the roses. What does this say? And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking. I want to walk with God. I want him to hold my hand. We'll go skip. No, that's not how you walk with God. You walk with him with his, by saying. You walk with him by saying, with his voice. What is a voice? It's saying something. They heard the voice of the Lord God walking. Are you here? What did they hear walking? The voice of the Lord God. If they were going to walk with God, they had to walk with his voice. They heard his voice walking. Yeah, yeah. Does he hear your voice walking? Yes. Your voice needs to be walking. Right. And walking means, you know, when we say walk with somebody, we mean live with somebody. And so this is where they fellowshiped. It was in speaking words, <laughs> in spoken words. Are you here? Do you yes, see that? Sir. I mean, that is a heavy revy. Yes. <laughs> they heard the voice of the Lord God walking. Now, what happens when you hear the word of God? Faith comes. They knew this back here. This is not some foreign thing from, from you know, the, the year 2000. This is something that was going on from the beginning of time. They were speaking spirits. They heard God walking, speaking. The voice of God. And to walk with him, they had to be speaking spirits. Are you here? Amos. Chapter 3, if you can find it. Amos, chapter 3, verse 3. What does it say? I know we've been here a hundred times. Your Bible, all of these scriptures that I read here today are just foundational things. And I don't know why we don't hear them in many churches, but this is what you need to grow up in. Grow up. That's right. See, you got it underlined. You're doing well. Amos chapter 3, verse 3. Can two walk together except they be agreed? How can you know? No. What are they agreed in? What they say. In what they say. So walking together, according to, once again, we're basing this on the Bible. I hope you're here. I'm not basing my walking together as some conceptual thing from out where I just think of it. Uh, walking together in the Bible means you need to be in agreement. So when you want to walk with God, and this is you walking with God, you're going to have to be a speaking spirit and say the same thing. That's what agreement means. Did you know that? That's what agreement means. Saying the same thing. 
You can't walk with God and not say the same thing. You can't, you can only, let me say it this way, you can only walk with God by saying the same thing. You only walk with God when you're saying His Word out your mouth. Remember, He is the Word. When you're saying His Word out your mouth, you're walking with Him. When you're not saying His Word out your mouth, you're not walking with Him. I am. <laughs> because I'm saying His Word out my mouth. You only walk with God when you're saying His Word out your mouth. Now, I will bring this into this other realm just because I can and you, are, you all know this. When you speak in tongues, whose words are you speaking? You're speaking His words. When I speak in tongues, I'm speaking God's Word. I'm walking with God because I'm speaking. The speaking is the key. You are a speaking spirit. So I'm speaking God's word. So if, you know, if somebody says, yes, I'm walking with God and they're doing anything other than speaking, either speaking in tongues or speaking the word of God, then, then they're not. You know, you don't have to jump on them and hit them with anything. Except the truth. <laughs> You're walking with God when you speak. Glory be to God. I hope you got something out of that today because there, there, there was a lot in there. We'll put that on a CD so you can listen to it over and over again because you really, this is something you must have. You must own this. You know what I mean when I say own something? I own it. Meaning I know how to do this. I know this. This is mine. And by owning it, I can show other people. Go, well, this is how you do it because I own it. It's mine. And many times with owning it, you got to purchase it, which means it might take you some study. It might take you some looking into. It might take you listening to the CD over and over again. But you must own this, especially as society members and people that belong here. This is part of what we require. You've got to have this. When I'm speaking with, you know, I want to walk with God today. Well, what am I going to, how am I going to do that? I tell you, I want to walk with God today. How am I going to do that? I'm going to speak his word. You're going to say, well, what you can do is you take a couple of scriptures that pertain to what you really want, and then you're going to say those words. And as you're saying those words, you'll be walking with God. You'll be working with God. You'll be in the middle of that feedback loop, which produces itself in your life. So every word of God has the ability to reproduce itself in your life if you walk with God in it. Holy Ghost of God in the earth today. Holy Ghost of God.